the Roanoke Nightmare. The American Horror Story episode Birth brought the story of the lost colony of Roanoke to Hollywood. In the subsequent season, My Roanoke Nightmare, a more detailed storyline plays out. Although the season is fictional and includes much gore to entertain viewers, the true story of the lost colony might just be weirder and creepier. Established 100 years after Christopher Columbus discovered America, and 100 years before Sir Isaac Newton got hit on the head by an apple, the Roanoke Colony was one of the earliest English settlements in America. It preceded Jamestown, the first successful English settlement, by over 20 years. Most importantly, it was an epic failure. With the exception of one colonist, every English settler in the colony vanished without a trace to this day, setting up the eerie legend of the lost colony of Roanoke. Some believe they all starved to death, some believed they were slaughtered by a Native American chief, and American Horror Story says they were visited by the foul wrath of a witch. How did the Roanoke colony come to be? What really happened to the colonists of Roanoke? Could the disappearance of the Roanoke colony be linked to several other missing stories in relatively recent history? Let's find out. Establishing the Roanoke Colony The infamous Lost Colony was not the first colony on Roanoke Island. In truth, it was the successor of an initial, unsuccessful attempt by Sir Walter Raleigh to establish an English settlement in North America. Yes, the same Sir Raleigh who was a soldier, statesman, writer, and everything else during the Elizabethan era. After his half-brother, Sir Humphrey Gilbert, was lost at sea after claiming Newfoundland for Queen Elizabeth I, the Queen drew up a charter that gave the land south of Newfoundland to Sir Raleigh. He had to colonize his territory before 1591, while remaining at Queen Elizabeth's court, so the ingenious explorer handed over the voyages to his associates and oversaw them from England. The Lane Colony was established in 1585 and had Ralph Lane as its governor. Among its colonists was John White, an artist who would go on to be the governor of the second Roanoke colony. The colony failed due to hostilities with natives and food shortages. It was evacuated in 1586, a year after the colonists arrived. Sir Raleigh was persuaded to send a second expedition to America, which he did on January 7, 1587, and John White was appointed governor. Between 115 to 170 colonists made the trip. John White's pregnant daughter, Eleanor, was one of them. She delivered her child, Virginia Dare, in the new colony, the first English child to be born on American soil. Another colonist, Marjorie Harvey, also gave birth on the island, but nothing is known about her child. The new settlers were mostly middle class who probably thought they had secured prized property in a promising endeavor and would become landlords in the future, if only they knew what the future held. Unfortunate circumstances had made sure Roanoke Island became the final destination of John White and his settlers. The colonists had traveled in three ships, and White intended to make the settlement in Chesapeake Bay. He stopped in Roanoke to meet with remnants of the colonists from the earlier colony. However, the colonists were abandoned by the flagship and had to settle in Roanoke. At the site of Lane's colony, they found only a skeleton that belonged to an Englishman. In less than a year, things had gotten dire for the colony. There were problems with the Native Americans and also a growing problem of food shortage, all of which were also responsible for the evacuation of the first Roanoke colony. The colonists made a reluctant John White return to England for supplies in the latter days of August, 1587. He arrived in England two months later, but could not return because of the war between England and Spain. He attempted to go back to Roanoke in 1588, but his ship was attacked by pirates, forcing him to forfeit the journey. In 1590, three years after he left Roanoke, John White reached the island with supplies and a small party. It was on the morning of August 18th that he made landfall. Coincidentally, it was the third birthday of his granddaughter, Virginia Dare. His first clue that something was wrong was the fresh footprints in the mud, which meant someone had seen his boat, but no one came to welcome him. Next, he found the word crow carved into a tree. When he finally reached the colony, he found it completely deserted, with the word Croatoan inscribed on a post at the entrance. Perhaps grasping for hope, he interpreted it to mean that the colonists had relocated to nearby Croatoan Island. He was unable to go in search of them because his ship, Hopewell, had snapped its anchor and such a journey ran the risk of a shipwreck. Further unfavorable incidents made him return to England without finding his fellow colonists. The Legend of the Lost Colony 
The mysterious disappearance of the Roanoke settlers happened over 400 years ago and is yet to be solved. Some history experts have called it the Area 51 of colonial history, and rightly so. There have been several theories that seek to explain their disappearance, but first, let's look at attempts to find them. Records do not exist of John White trying to find his daughter, granddaughter, and the rest of the colonists, and we can only assume he was hopeful of them being found. Sir Walter Raleigh searched for the missing colonists in 1602, but his expedition was motivated by a need to maintain a monopoly on Roanoke Island. The price of sassafras, an aromatic plant valuable in those times, had soared, and keeping Roanoke would ensure he could grow them. His search was unsuccessful, and in 1603, he was executed by King James I. In the same 1603, Bartholomew Gilbert, who had explored Cape Cod, went in search of them. He was killed by Native Americans for unknown reasons. After Jamestown was established, John Smith of Pocahontas infamy was captured by the Powhatans. Their chief would later be rumored to have slaughtered the colonists. It was the same chief who told John Smith of the existence of the villages, where natives wore European-style clothing and built walled houses like the English. His tales prompted John Smith to send search parties to find the colonists, but the search yielded no results. What happened to the Roanoke colonists? Tales abound have cultivated the legend of the lost colony of Roanoke. Literature, pop culture, and school history have told and retold the story, but it still holds listeners spellbound each time it is told. Starvation and cannibalism are dreadful ends that the colonists might have suffered. The colony depended on Native Americans for food, which definitely became a difficult option, as hostilities grew between both parties. They were also low on food and supplies when their governor, John White, headed for England to seek aid. During his three-year absence, the colonists may have turned to cannibalism and gradually reduced their numbers. It has also been rumored that the Powhatan chief that captured John Smith claimed to have slaughtered the colonists. Revenge has been given as a motive for the act, as bad blood had existed between Native Americans and the early English settlers. Arguably, the most accepted theory is that the colonists integrated with nearby Native American tribes. If it did happen, the colonists had gradually dropped English culture and picked up that of their neighbors. An observation through history lends credence to the integration story. When early colonists were among Native Americans for a significant amount of time, they became reluctant to rejoin their fellow colonists. These happened even if the colonists were captured or enslaved. Hence, there is a strong possibility that the same thing happened with the Roanoke colonists. There have also been rumors of blonde, blue-eyed natives in the past, characteristics that belong to the Europeans. Also, an account exists of natives that could read English. Scholars have disputed both, with the former attributed to albinism, and the latter was simply set aside as unreliable. If the colonists did join a Native American tribe and settled with them, it leaves the hanging question of which tribe did they settle into. The Roanoke and Croatoan Islands are part of present-day Hatteras Island, whose indigenous people identify as descendants of both Croatoans and the lost colonists, although DNA evidence does not associate them with the colonists. Another hypothesis put forward for the disappearance of the Englishmen on Roanoke is that they attempted to sail back to England. It is plausible that some of the colonists were sailors and were able to build a ship to take them back home. If the ship was lost at sea, it would explain why they all disappeared without a trace. However, if a return to England was attempted, some colonists would invariably have been left behind to secure the colony. Finding neither humans, corpses, nor skeletons at the colony three years later puts a hole in the hypothesis. With all these myths abound, it is not surprising that the story of the Roanoke colonists is now common in American literature and pop culture. Pop culture, American horror story, and the word Croatoan. From George Bancroft's A History of the United States in 1834 to the sixth season of the American Horror Story, My Roanoke Nightmare, America has fantasized about the life and end of the Roanoke colonists. Much emphasis has been placed on John White's granddaughter, Virginia Dare. The Virginia Dare story has moved from being brought up by Native Americans to becoming a magical white doe, to becoming a symbol for women's suffrage and even white supremacy. But even the first American English child has not had as much infamy as the word Croatoan, which her grandfather found inscribed on a post when he returned to the colony from England. In American Horror Story, Sarah Paulson's medium character, Billy Dean, tells the story of the lost colony. In her fictional version of history, the souls of the dead colonists haunted and killed the villagers in Roanoke until a village elder bound them using the word Croatoan. 
Spooky as that may be, the word has also been connected to some mysterious disappearances for centuries. In 1888, Black Bart, the infamous stagecoach robber, was released from prison and vanished mysteriously. Investigators found Croatoan scratched on the wall of his prison cell. In 1913, American horror short story writer Ambrose Bierce went missing and carved into his bedpost was Croatoan. Edgar Allan Poe is also believed to have been muttering the word Croatoan minutes before he died. Another disappearance connected to the word is that of American female pilot Amelia Earhart, who vanished without a trace while flying over the Pacific Ocean. In her diary was found the word Croatoan. How true all these accounts are is left to speculations, and most believe they are exaggerations, but there is still one more incident connected to the word. In 1921, a commercial ship crashed into Cape Hatteras with no one on board, although meals were already prepared in the galley. It was a ghost ship. When investigations were conducted, the word Croatoan was found scribbled in the captain's logbook. With all these known, we can only keep wondering what really happened to the Roanoke colony.